Hi everyone, welcome back to the Sunday video. If you are new here, I'm Dr. Hong. I'm an assistant professor in pharmaceutical sciences and a pharmacist. Now, in the past two years, there has been much attention regarding how vitamin D is associated with a COVID disease outcome, and perhaps you are already taking vitamin D to support your immune system. But is that all? Are there any other dietary supplements that can maintain or boost immunity? Let's find out together. Why is your immune system weakened? First, we need to understand that our immune system function is dynamic, meaning it is not always functioning in the same way. What we eat and our lifestyle can affect our immune function. Factors such as chronic diseases, old age, chronic diabetes, nutritional deficiency can all negatively impact or weaken our immune system. Now, while we do not have much control over our age, we do have a lot more control over what we eat and our nutritional status. No one needs to take supplements with a balanced diet. Many researchers argue that no one should be taking supplements if they are on a balanced diet. Well, that is an ideal world that we don't live in. The truth is that most Americans are inadequate in their micronutrients and vitamin intakes. And let's take a look. A recent National Health and Nutrition Examination survey evaluated data from 26,282 adults aged 19 to 99. According to the study, 95% of the U.S. adult population had inadequate vitamin D intake, and 84% had inadequate vitamin E intake. And furthermore, 45%, 46%, and 15% of the U.S. adult population had deficiencies in vitamin A, vitamin C, and zinc, respectively. I've done a few videos on vitamin D in the past. Today, let's look at zinc and vitamin C. Let's look at vitamin C first. Vitamin C, or ascorbic acid, is a water-soluble nutrient that is naturally present in some foods, added to some foods, and available as a dietary supplement. The human body is unable to produce this vitamin. Extensive research has established that vitamin C is a vital nutrient in overall immune health and is the most well-known immune-boosting supplement. So, what is the evidence? A 2013 Cochrane review looked at the results from 29 clinical trials involving more than 11,000 people who regularly took at least 200 milligrams of vitamin C daily. They did not find vitamin C to reduce the incidence of colds in the general population. Still, it is associated with a modest reduction in the length and severity of cold symptoms. A 2012 review exploring the treatment of the common cold in pediatric patients and adults, and find that prophylactic vitamin C moderately diminished the duration of cold symptoms. But not the prevalence of colds in both patient populations. Although the evidence does not say taking vitamin C every day could prevent a person from getting a cold, a sufficient level of vitamin C consistently does appear to shorten the course of illness. Now, for me, even one less day of stuffy and runny nose is worth it. So, how much vitamin C do you need? According to the 2015 to 2020 Dietary Guidelines for Americans, the recommended daily value of vitamin C changes with age. Adults need more daily vitamin C than children, and men also need a little more than women. The smoker have a significantly lower plasma level of vitamin C compared to non-smokers. While I'm not suggesting vitamin C can improve chronic smokers' overall health, the study did show vitamin C could improve blood vessel functions in chronic smokers. What about side effects? Generally, excess vitamin C is excreted through urine, but too much of that can cause diarrhea, nausea, and abdominal cramps. People with decreased kidney function need to watch how much they take. 
and it is generally a good idea to talk to your doctor before starting it. What about vitamin C and COVID? A Spain study saw that up to 82% of critically ill patients had low vitamin C values. A systematic review, however, did not see a significant benefit with vitamin C given in COVID-19 patients. If you ask my opinion, I tend to think vitamin C's effect on the immune system is more of a chronic management role. That means taking a high dose, a short course of vitamin C may not do much for a person if the person is already sick. But if a person maintains an adequate level of vitamin C consistently, then it is possible to have beneficial outcome on the disease progression. Now let's look at zinc. Zinc is essential trace mineral with multiple roles in the body, including normal growth and the development of reproductive organs. Zinc is also involved with T cell development, differentiation of T helper and T killer cells, and T cell and B cell activation signaling. So what is the evidence for zinc? A 2015 meta-analysis of three randomized trials reported that the use of zinc acetate lozenges for the common cold reduced the duration of many common cold symptoms such as runny nose, stuffy nose, sneezing, sore throat, cough, and muscle ache. The author concluded that zinc acetate lozenges at a dose about 80 mg per day may be a beneficial treatment for a common cold when started within 24 hours of symptom onset and used for less than 2 weeks. A 2006 small randomized clinical trial determined that there is evidence supporting the use of oral zinc in pediatric patients to treat and prevent the common cold. They find that prophylactic use of zinc sulfate at a dose of 15 mg per day during respiratory illness seasons result in a noteworthy reduction in the number of colds and days absence from school. So, how much zinc do you need and how to take zinc supplements? Sing supplements is most effective when taken one hour before or one hour after a meal. But if your stomach cannot tolerate it, it is also okay to take that with food. Long-term use of sing, especially in high doses, is not typically recommended, may cause copper deficiency and may increase the risk of urinary tract issues. Since most dietary zinc is obtained from animal products, vegetarians may need higher amounts of zinc because diet high in fiber can reduce zinc absorption. What about zinc and COVID? Similar to vitamin C, an observational study also identified a significant number of COVID-19 patients with zinc deficiency early on during the pandemic and it is associated with worse disease outcomes. Unfortunately, a small open-labeled clinical trial using high-dose zinc and vitamin C to treat non-hospitalized COVID-19 patients did not show improvement in symptoms. To sum up, both vitamin C and zinc have shown their role in supporting the immune system, but the evidence leaned toward more having an adequate level consistently rather than taking one or both when illnesses occur. Now, while we can certainly get our vitamins and micronutrients from food, we may not be eating the right food all the time, and many of us are just too busy to fix a good meal consistently and every day. This is when supplements can make a difference. But if you are a person that are taking multiple prescription medications, it is always a good idea to double check with your primary care doctors before starting a new supplement. And don't just trust my words. I always have study links in the description box to back up my claims. The bottom line is that vitamin D, vitamin C, zinc, and many more essential nutrients are only part of the equation in maintaining a strong immune system. There are many variables I have not covered in this video, and you can let me know in the comment section below. But I intend to cover this topic further in the near future. Meanwhile, please 
eat healthy, stay healthy, and thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye.